In Peter's second epistle, he tells his readers that some things in Paul's letters are hard to understand. And if you've been around Torah-observant Christian teachers, especially groups like 119 Ministries, you know this is a commonly cited passage, and I think it's important that we dig in on it a little bit just to see what's really going on there. Because if we're not careful, it can easily be misapplied in our Bible studies. One Nineteen Ministries is not the only Hebrew Roots group that uses this passage, of course. But I'm going to use them as my example today because this passage in 2 Peter plays a fundamental role in their teaching series called The Pauline Paradox. I, I bought this book and as you can see, I've spent a good amount of time studying it to try to understand what they're teaching and, and, and where they're coming from. And I have to say up front that 119 Ministries deserve some respect for at least delivering their message in a friendly and charitable way and for encouraging their viewers to test their teachings. That's commendable. And as much as I disagree with their theology, their teachings aren't 100% wrong. They manage to teach some good stuff along the way. For example, in one of their Pauline Paradox videos, they teach this. Jews aren't automatically saved based on their Jewishness, and Gentiles do not need to convert to Judaism to be saved. Both are equally lost and in need of deliverance from their sins, and they can both be saved by grace through faith in Christ. That's great. I agree. That is a very biblical position to hold. Now that said, as delicious and healthy as a big fresh salad might be, it only takes a tiny pellet of mouse poop to change things dramatically. And this is what we have with the teachings of 119 Ministries. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that these are bad men or intentionally deceptive or anything like that. I've actually met and debated with a 119 teacher and I found him friendly and intelligent and charitable. What I'm saying is that the salads they make are scary to eat. Their teachings might include a lot of, you know, fresh greens and veggies, but there are also tiny surprises hidden in there in the form of assumptions and presuppositions and unbiblical statements. As I said, they admirably ask their viewers to test their teachings. So, let's honor their culture and do just that. In the Pauline Paradox teaching, their basic argument structure is this. Step one, Isolate a single passage of Jesus' teaching to prove that the law of Moses is required of even Gentile Christians, and Gentiles have never been under the law of Moses. Now, the passage they use is Matthew 5, 17 through 20, and I'm going to link below to a couple of videos I've made on that passage, which show where this Torah-observant Hebrew roots interpretation goes wrong. Step two of their argument is to then reinterpret Paul's teachings to support and harmonize with their conclusions in step one. And when I say reinterpret, I'm talking about reinterpreting the mainstream accepted Christian understanding of Paul's teachings. And to do so, they come up with this long list of what they believe are different laws that Paul was speaking of. The law of sin, the law of sin and death, the law of the spirit of life, the law of righteousness, and so on. And a key for this presentation of this big, confusing list of laws is the passage in, in 2 Peter, which tells us that some things in Paul's letters are hard to understand. Okay, so let's test that teaching. Let's start by simply reading the passage where Peter talks about Paul's letters. We're in 2 Peter 3, starting at verse 15. Count the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you, according to the wisdom given him, as he does in all his letters when he speaks in them of these matters. And by the way, these matters that Peter's referring to is the coming day of the Lord, which is what Peter had just been talking about prior to this verse. There are some things in them, in Paul's letters, that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction, as they do the other scriptures. Hebrew Roots teachers regularly use these words to set the stage for their teachings, in you know, preparing their viewers or readers for something from Paul that's going to be trickier than it seems. In fact, in chapter 3 of the Pauline Paradox, it's called, Why is Paul so difficult to understand? And here, they quote the passage we just looked at, and then they say this, quote, 
we have no reason to doubt that Peter's firsthand testimony about Paul's letters could apply today as well. Paul certainly didn't become easier to understand. Many of Paul's statements about the law of God are perhaps the most difficult parts of his letters. Now, I want you to notice something. 119 Ministries teachers, and Hebrews Roots teachers in general, seem to only apply Peter's statement to those teachings of Paul that pose a challenge to their own theology. Those teachings where 119 Ministries diverges from mainstream Christian thought. And here's the thing. This passage does tell us that even at that very early stage in church history, Paul's writings were already being misrepresented. But being misrepresented by whom? And about what? Which things in Paul's letter are hard to understand? Well, Peter doesn't tell us. He just makes the the sweeping, unspecific statement, there are some things in them that are hard to understand. And because the text doesn't specify which things are hard to understand, this passage can easily become a chisel in the hands of anyone that wants to reshape Paul's teachings. And for that reason, it's simply irresponsible for anyone to suggest that Peter's statement applies to any specific teaching of Paul, because we don't know which things Peter was referring to. For all we know, Peter could have been referring to the Hebrew roots teachers of his day, the Judaizers who unsuccessfully tried to teach that Gentile believers in Jesus were required to keep the law of Moses. Maybe those were the hard things that the ignorant and unstable twisted to their own destruction. We just don't know. We don't know which things Peter had in mind because he doesn't tell us. So anytime we apply Peter's words in this passage to a specific Pauline teaching, we've stepped outside of the Bible and into the land of speculation. And it becomes especially egregious if we're gratuitously applying Peter's statements to many different teachings of Paul. So the next time you hear anyone using Peter's statement about Paul that way, take it with a grain of salt. Thanks for watching. Shalom. And by the way, if you like these kinds of videos and find these teachings helpful, would you do me a favor? Subscribe to this channel and comment on the videos and share them with your friends. Thank you so much for your support.